Hello, and welcome to the Excellus tutorials for the Excellus HD and Excellus HDS cameras. Today, we'll cover onboard software. The first section of the tutorial, we will cover camera settings. When you turn on your microscope and your Excellus camera, and you have a specimen in focus, you may not see any toolbars. To see the toolbar, simply move your cursor to the edge of the window and the toolbar should pop up. If you don't see this dialog, you may just see these two icons. Just click the settings icon to show your camera settings dialog. The first step when imaging is going to be to set the white balance of the camera. To do that, you want to adjust the exposure of the camera. You want to move your specimen out of the field. Then you want to uncheck block white balance. And then check that box again to lock the white balance. This way the color doesn't change as you change specimens or areas of the specimen. You may now move your specimen back into the field. Other settings for the camera are auto exposure. I'm currently using manual exposure, but I can use auto exposure, which would also use the brightness setting. So if I click auto exposure, I can then adjust exposure to the desired brightness. Several other settings are available. You may adjust the gamma. This is an overall density, feeling of, uh, of color and detail. And I, I recommend doing this while looking through an eyepiece and compare the, the images. There are also contrast and saturation settings. Reducing saturation all the way will give you a monochrome appearing image. Since we used white balance, there's probably no need to adjust your red or blue settings for color or for adjusting the color temperature. That was already done when we performed the white balance. When in manual exposure mode, as we are here, brightness adjustment does not do anything. There's also settings for sharpness, and denoise. The next area below uh, gives you buttons for snapping an image, performing a video capture, and you can see when I click video capture in the lower right hand corner you can see it's recording video. Click it again to save that video and it saves it as an AVI file. There's also buttons for high dyna dynamic range. What this will generally do is um, stretch the darker regions so you can see more detail in those. Use this as is appropriate for your own specimens. The 50 hertz and 60 hertz are options in case you happen to see electronic interference or like a rolling pattern across the screen. You may try one of these options to reduce that interference pattern. And that is the way you would set up your camera for imaging. In this next section of the Excel tutorials, I'd like to introduce you to the right side toolbar. 
when we are back in our live image, I will move the specimen to show that we are live. If you take your mouse cursor, go all the way to the right, you'll see additional buttons or icons appear. These are the calibration icon, and this tool is necessary in order to perform any measurements. And we have several image manipulation icons. You may flip your image horizontally, you can flip it vertically, zoom in, zoom out, create a mask, you just draw a box, and the area of the, of the specimen that you want to show will just be in that box. The rest will be black. Playback accesses the SD card on the camera, allows you to see the other uh, and view the, um, the images that you've captured. You may compare images as well. You can undo something or cancel uh, an operation. And then there are cross line and roller options to place over the image. In this next section of the Excelis tutorial, we'll show you how to calibrate your camera. In order to pour, perform a calibration, you will need some uh, standard device. I happen to be using a stage micrometer. The uh, ruler that is on this micrometer measures one millimeter in length. Each division is 0 0.01 millimeter, which is equivalent to 10 microns. So the entire length of this scale is 1,000 microns, or 100 divisions. I move to my lowest magnification, which is 4x. I'm now going to move to the right, show the, the calibration button. Click that to begin my calibration. Click on the one of the indicators, drag to the other side. I click and release. Click again. It records the number of pixels. You can then tell it the distance. As I mentioned this is 1,000 and is microns. Magnification, I am using a 4x. And I'm going to call this 4x. Let me then click OK. It has now saved a calibration. The next step would be to change objectives, center your stage micrometer again. And if I move off, that dialog, I get the little crosshair icon or cursor again, and I can click release, drag across, click and release again. We're on our second calibration, so the name field has uh, incremented to number two. The length again is 1000 microns. I'm using a 10x this time. And I'm going to call this 10x. And we'll click OK. I'll do one more. With my 40x. Need a little more light. And if I come off of that dialog, you see I get my little cursor. You want to draw as wide, as far across the field as possible. So I can see, and on these lines, you want to draw from the same side. So I've got a line here, so I'm going to draw from the right side of that to the right side of the one farthest away. 
be this one. Okay, now if we count, there are five divisions here. So it's 5, 10, 15, 20, not quite 25, but I've got 24 divisions. But remember, this is 10 microns for each, each division. So if I counted 24 times 10, that's 240. Microns. 40x. Oops. Call this 40x. Click OK. To remove a calibration, simply click the X button, and you can actually move between calibrations this way. Then you just have to click the X, and it will remove that. The next section of the Excelis tutorial is to review measurements. We've already performed calibration for the camera. So now we can use those calibrations to uh, perform some measurements on our image. To access the measurement tool, you can do it two ways. You can go back to calibration, choose your magnification here, and click Start Measurement, in which case it tells you to right-click the mouse. And there are our measurement options, our tools. You could also just click, right-click your mouse anywhere, come down to Set Scale, and highlight the calibration you want to use. So I'm back on my 10x lens, so I'm using 10x. You can also adjust the line width of your drawings, measurements, the line color, the font color, and whether or not to use a magnifier. So I'm going to show you what the magnifier looks like. It's a small window that will appear in the corner of the image, and it's just to aid in uh, in some of the drawing that you might be doing, some of the measurements. So the first one um, I'm going to show you is the scale bar. And the scale bar is always added in the lower right. It's always the same length in pixels. Uh, so there's no way to round this to say 50 microns or 100 microns. There's also no way in the onboard software to adjust the font, the font size, or the font property, such as making it bold. But there are several other tools that are available here. Coordinate allows you to click an area and it will record uh, the coordinates of that area in X and Y. Line tool gives you op options of arbitrary lines, so any angle. Horizontal will only draw a horizontal line uh, regardless of your cursor position, and vertical only vertical. So let me draw a horizontal line. There in the bottom left you can see the uh, magnifier. So click once, drag across, see it's only horizontal. Doesn't matter if I move my cursor up or down, it's going to draw a horizontal line. Click again to stop it. The measurements are there. To perform another measurement with a horizontal line, just click once, drag, click again. To see other measurement tools, right click your mouse. That's line. There's a freehand line as well. For rectangle, circle, and polygon, you also have the option to choose which data you would like to display with the, uh, with the measurement. So we'll click that tool, click a rectangle, we'll click 
drag, and then click again. Don't click and hold, click release, then drag, then click again. You can see those four measurements, width, height, perimeter, and area are stored there with that. If you would like to export measurements that you have made, right click to get the measurement toolbar again, and then you can choose to save results either in Excel file or text file. I'm going to draw one more uh, object. I'm going to use a two-point circle. So I'm just going to click once, and I released, and then I'm going to click again, and there's my circle. Now, if you would like to save this image, these measurements, these drawings with this image, after finishing drawing your last measurement, simply move over here to the left again to show your um, these two buttons and click Snap. And it will save that image directly to the SD card in the camera. You can also remove the measurements by right-clicking, click Exit, and they go away with the exception of the scale bar. Simply double click that and it goes away. Even though the Excelis will save images, it will not allow you to measure the images. So measurement is only available in the live view. Thank you for joining our Excellus tutorials.